Hi and welcome to this uh, little tutorial. Uh, during the next few minutes I'd like to show you how you can create a simple 3D objects um, to simulate uh, lesion on rock surfaces for example. As first step I'll add a simple plane object. Um, I'll use a display tag and um, set it to grow shading so that um, when uh, looking from the top perspective um, we have a um, visible picture later on. Then we need a material so I'll create a new material, rename it to lesion, go for the color channel and then I'll add a texture that I prepared earlier. Um, I turn off the specular, we don't need it right now. Drag and drop onto the plane object. Here we go. So this is um, our reference. Um, I think it would be a good idea to change the texture preview size to something bigger. So now the image is a little bit sharper. I will select an area which I like uh, from this image and then create a simple polygonal shape um, to mimic uh, this area. Therefore I'll have to add a polygon object. I'll switch into top view, activate the point mode and uh, when the move mode is active you can simply add points um, to this polygon object by uh, control clicking into the viewport. So I'll simply add some um, points probably like this. Then B for bridge to create uh, the polygons. We're now switching into uh, the perspective view. You can see our polygon object um, right on top of the reference image. Keep in mind that um, this entire shape I scanned it um, was probably one or two centimeters, let's say two centimeters in, in real world size. So um, you have to um, decide on how many polygons you really want to use to model this shape. Um, in many cases probably you don't get that close, so you, so you should keep the shape um, um, simple. Um, if you really want to make a microscopic like shot, then you'll have to mimic the shape a lot better, of course. So now I'll add some more um, points. I'm adding the polygons uh, with help of B. And we could add some points right over here, probably one here, something like that. I'll use the cut tool or K with mode set to loop. Then add some more points. Okay, so you'll notice um, I'm not really um, exact. The only thing um, that I'd like to um, change is um, I'd like to avoid um, too much black or dark colors. Um, so I'll probably add another loop right here. Oh, we have to switch into default mode for a loop cut. Okay, something like that. Um, 
this is because later on I'd like to use this reference image also as um, a base for uh, the texture. Um, if you don't plan to do so, well, then you don't have to care if, if there are some black showing up um, because later on you will use a different texture. So this was actually, well, already the first step. We have our um, base shape laid, laid out. And now uh, we can, um, well, give a little bit volume to the shape. And uh, therefore I'll switch into the perspective view. First of all, I want to um, reassure that all faces really show upwards. You can can see when I hide uh, the rest. Um, those face in the other direction. So with all faces selected I choose UA for align normals and now all normals are pointing upwards. Now in point mode or probably point and tweak mode I'll move the points and faces upwards a little bit to give a depth uh, to this uh, little piece of lesion um, because later on I'll, I want to project the texture I um, will only move those points um, upwards along the y-axis. Just select a few points, edges, faces and move them upwards so that this little piece um, won't look too flat later on. Also a good idea is to turn on uh, the plane object again. Um, you, you'll notice that at some um, points um, the lesion is flickering. This is because uh, those parts those faces are aligned um, directly or lie directly on the floor, on the ground plane and uh, this leads to flickering and actually this also could happen later on um, during a rendering uh, so I'll simply move those points and faces slightly upwards that the flickering um, stops so now we have uh, some depth in our uh, lesion shape. Now right click the object, choose Fong. I think we can go with the default value. And now um, if you want to, you can uh, project the texture that we used as reference onto this uh, little piece of lesion. Therefore I'll um, go into object mode. First select the material tag of uh, the original reference. By default it's set to UV mapping. Uh, we'll change that to flat. This will mess up the texture. Rotate along the p-axis, minus 90 degrees. Looking better again. And then right click the tag and choose fit to object. Now we have basically the same result compared to before um, uh, with the UV mapping. And now when uh, this, in case the plane object and the polygon object um, are placed in the same location, I'm talking about the, the axis of, of the pivot point, um, then we simply can copy, control, drag, this um, icon over to the polygon object and now if you turn off you'll notice that um, well the texture is still in place on our well hand modeled piece of lesion. Now right click again uh, and this time on the, on the lesion object choose generate UV coordinates and now um, we have a default uh, material tag with, uh, U, um, with mapping set to UV mapping. If we change um, to UV edit layout, well, I'll have to scale down that everything fits in right here. 
um, and then choose the polygon objects, you can see that um, the UV faces only take a small part of the texture, but that's fine um, for now. Good. Now rename this object, let's say lesion 1. And this is basically all we have to do. And now um, you can repeat this step several times. Just use the same plane object, create a new polygon object, select an area, lay out a simple shape, and then give that shape a little bit of depth, copy the frontal um, mapping back to the or over to the um, handmade lesion object and uh, then you can uh, switch that or convert that to a default UV map. So now you might ask um, if it is waste um, if you only use such a small space of the complete texture. That's actually true. But if you know beforehand that you have to create several pieces of lesion, um, I think in, in, in my rendering uh, I used 10 pieces of lesion, something like that, um, then you're using pretty much um, all, or you can use pretty much all of this um, space, so you're not wasting too much memory. Uh, the advantage of this approach is also that you only have to edit one single material or one single bitmap if you want to change the overall look of the lesion on a rock surface, for example. But of course it also works um, to create several lesion bitmaps and uh, several lesion materials. That's totally up to you. It's really just a matter of taste. So now I just want to um, change uh, one last thing. Um, as you can see, the pivot or the axis um, of uh, this lesion object is not centered or not related to the geometry at all. So I'm selecting the axis tool and move the axis either in the center or you can choose a different part. Again, that's totally up to you. And now I move it back um, to the world center. Now I think it also might be a good idea if I place the pivot at this direction to rotate the axis. So now um, the z-axis is pointing into uh, the direction of this object, of this lesion object. Now just rotate that back so that uh, position and rotation is set to zero. So this is how you can build a simple piece of lesion. As I mentioned before, if you want to get closer, then you simply have to add a little bit more detail so that those edges are not that razor sharp. It also would be possible to make use of um, an alpha or opacity map to cut out the edges in a more smooth manner. Um, but I thought it would be a good idea to get away um, um, without alpha maps because especially when, when you have many overlapping alpha um, planes. Um, the render time often really is increased a lot. So I thought try to get away without alpha maps, without op opacity maps. And for most um, applications this should be really fine enough. Um, only if you're getting really close you need more detail in those shapes. So go ahead, model some more or simply download the files that I provided uh, on this project page and then start to create your um, distributions, scatter those objects on rocks or on trunks. I'm looking forward to see results. So thanks for watching and happy rendering.
And by the way, uh, the next video uh, will try to cover some aspects of scattering those lesion objects uh, onto rocks or trunk surfaces.